my goodness. Oh. So a, a few things I underestimated about being in a box for an hour. <laughs> the floor is really, really hard. Like way harder, I didn't practice that. Um, and you can't breathe so great either. And so I, I asked for a pair of scissors, and so I poked a little hole, and when I wasn't breathing, I was actually looking to see who came, and I was marking people off my list <laughs> who told me that they would come. So I've got about 23 people that uh, I could have missed just peripheral vision, but anyway. So uh, thank you so much for coming, and we need to get started. Thank you.
Thank you so much. So uh, when I was planning this Christmas concert uh, in the box about 40 minutes ago, <laughs> trying to figure out what to play, what to say, uh, it's, it's tough because like you saw in the trivia, which is like an identity thief's like greatest thing tonight, uh, I feel like y'all know all my like password questions now, but, uh, but hopefully you learned a thing or two, but this is my fourth annual Christmas concert, which is pretty exciting. But it's tough to perform and put on a Christmas concert that's different, because if I play like new Christmas songs, that's gonna be terrible. You know, you wanna hear, you wanna hear the good stuff. And so I feel like you've heard most everything, but you haven't seen most everything. Um, and so my true gift honestly is not even performing um, piano songs. It is, it's, it's the process of me hearing a song and seeing exactly how to play it and nearly instantaneously being able to make that happen on the piano. So I have sent our slides people 40 Christmas songs and I've told them to jumble them up. I have no clue what order they're gonna be in. I don't even know the first one. But uh, once I play enough of that Christmas song that's recognizable, he's gonna advance it to the next song and I can't stop playing. So it's gonna be like an, an ad lib Christmas medley. So when people say, do you get nervous at these concerts? Normally no, but this part, I will admit, is gonna make me a little bit nervous. So hopefully I can do it. My goal is like five minutes or less. So I, and there's not a good way to practice it either because, you know, by myself. So anyway, let's see how this goes. And okay, the first one, surely that can pop up. Give me a little, oh goodness, all right. <sighs> okay, the clock doesn't start just yet. All right, here we go.
Thank you. Ha. Ah. Wow. <laughs> My heart is racing. My heart. I still think I'm not out of the box, literally. I, I feel like I'm trapped in that box still, so that's messed with my mind. I'll be home for Christmas. God, that got me for like six unwanted seconds. So it could have been slightly better, but oh well. Um, wow, okay, so now you've heard basically every Christmas song you're gonna hear the rest of the night. So if anybody has dinner plans or you're trying to get to another event tonight, you've heard a taste. Um, so we'll be talking about CDs a little bit later, uh, but my Christmas album is hands down my favorite. I'm not just saying that because I have 2,000 sitting in my basement that I need to get rid of. <laughs> it really is my favorite, and this is a great time of year to take that off my hands. Uh, but this is my absolute favorite song from that album. Um, I don't know if you all know the difference between major and minor, I would imagine at least half of you do, but uh, just to explain, a major chord, a C major chord sounds like, C minor is, so it's like a little darker, a little maybe sadder or scarier. Uh, there's a lot of minor Christmas carols. And so what I have done is I've kind of just thrown them all together and one medley called Carols and Minors. Um, but I didn't just throw them all together. They're all kind of woven together by Carol of the Bells. So see if you can pick up um, on all the different carols in this one.
Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, there was a technique that I used. Uh, I first saw it at a Billy Joel concert. He opens Angry Young Man with that for any Billy Joel enthusiasts. And uh, it was just super cool. And at a Billy Joel concert, his hands are also displayed, which is amazing. Um, so we're going to talk about something a little different. Uh, you know, it's weird to talk about CDs and sales pitches and merch at the end. Like, I don't, I don't want to, like, build up and, you know, get you all in the Christmas spirit and then, like, dump a, a, like a weird sales pitch on you. So we're just going to go ahead and knock this out, okay? So I have some slides, and it's titled, 10 Reasons You Won't Buy a CD Tonight. So we're just going to go through these. I'm just going to hash them out. We're going to talk about it, have a conversation. Uh, first of all, reason number one, CDs are obsolete, and I don't even have a way to play one. That is not my problem. <laughs> I have, I have to unload these things. So there, there are thousands of them everywhere. So I, uh, vinyls actually outsold CDs in 2019. Can you believe that? So you could be on like the cutting edge of when they come back in 40 plus years. So, and we're actually providing trash cans, so if you just want to buy it to support me and then just immediately throw it away, that's fine. I don't even care what you do with it. Okay, reason number two. This is a pop, all of you here are guilty of this. I already have your CDs. Well, guess who doesn't? The person that you need to play Dirty Santa with. And then you can see the look on their face when they open it and think, what am I gonna do with this? I have no way to play this. It's a perfect Dirty Santa gift. Okay, reason number three, I can just stream it for free. You know who you are. You know who you are. It takes 2,500 streams to equal $10, which is how much the CDs are being sold for. So, 25, so if you don't buy a CD and you will agree to, you know, set up some type of rig to continuously play my music while you're sleeping on roommates, computers, whatever you need to do, stream it 2,500 times, that's an acceptable one. Reason number four, your line's too long. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. You're fine. It's, that's why I started at 5.30, so you'll have ample time to get through the line. Okay, number five don't have any cash with me. Well, I accept cash, checks, don't need to see your driver's license. Uh, I accept literally any form of payment, credit cards, debit cards. You can, I've even got my Venmo and PayPal information. You can, you, so you don't even have to stand in line, you just take one and it's an honor system. So you can just take a whole bunch of them and just run to your car, and then you calculate how much you owe me, just email me, I'll send you my address. I've just got to unload these things, people. <laughs> these are, I've got so many. Reason number six, they're too expensive. Okay, are we really gonna have this conversation? This is a free concert. <laughs> Nothing is free. <laughs> Nothing is free. So, it's the least you could do. Okay, number seven. I have no Christmas cheer. They made a movie about this. Watch The Grinch. You, I'm hoping by the end of this, you will have Christmas cheer, and that won't be an excuse either. Reason number eight. All right. This, this gets me. John Michael doesn't need the money. You don't know me. You know, you, you answer a few trivia questions, right, and you think you know me and understand me. You don't. And what I don't need is thousands of CDs in my garage. That's what I don't need. Okay, reason number nine. Don't ever listen to piano music. Well, guess who does? Jesus. <laughs> so, 
maybe you ought to change what you're listening to. And I can't think of a greater way to do that than to buy all of my CDs. I'm even buying, it's a buy two, get one free. I'm only selling three just to keep it easy. $20 bill, three CDs, you're out the door. No line, no anything. Okay, last one. <laughs> this is a real thing. This is, this exists. This exists. I have, I have had many encounters. Um, I'm not gonna go into that. Um, I'm also slightly guilty of this myself. And we're not gonna go into that because it gets real confusing real quick. Um, but you all have seen more little people today than I have. So think about that. Think about that, yeah. There's like five of us in Alabama, so how could I be comfortable, you know? So anyway, uh, so there are only 10 reasons not to buy one, and I feel like I have refuted all of them, and so I appreciate your support. We can now continue with the, the concert. And this is one of my uh, favorite parts about these concerts. Uh, you know, last year I joked about Ruben Stuttered, couldn't get Ruben, so I got, a, there's no joke, couldn't get Ruben. Um, his career's picked up a little bit. So I thought for sure, you know, I could just like Facebook messenger him and like give him, him an honorarium and he'd be like delighted to come, but that's not the case. So uh, I want to invite one of my best friends up on stage. Mr. Drew Kearney. If you uh, have been here before, you've heard him. Thank you. I don't have a career, so I'm always available, man. <laughs> it's, it's an honor. Bells will be ringing. The same sad, sad song Oh, what a Christmas To have the blues My baby's gone Once again 
gosh, he's better than Ruben. He's so daggum good. Um, all right, so, and we literally like just decided to do that too. Um, but I'm gonna transition, like I wanted to get kind of the, the non-sacred carols out of the way, or I guess those aren't carols, I guess just um, those types of Christmas songs out. Because uh, I did want to just, I wanted to take this opportunity to encourage you because I've, I've been given a very, very unique story, as you all can imagine. And so uh, I wanted to take your, draw your attention to Luke 2. If you don't have a Bible, if you don't have a phone with a Bible, you're most likely familiar with this, but I'm going to read it anyway, so you don't even have to take anything out. This is the traditional Christmas story out of the book of Luke. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. So I, I've kind of divided this talk into three parts uh, with some music to go with it. But I love that verse, fear not for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. So just talking about good news, um, good news is kind of a relative thing. If I say, hey, I've got good news, um, a friend of mine put a prank on me and put a baby gate outside my bedroom door. <laughs> you know, those baby gates might as well be a wall because I cannot get over it. <laughs> it is a horrible prank and it happened in college. So Ryan, you know who you are. Uh, but, but my good news isn't your good news. You know. Hey, good news, bro, I found my hat. I didn't lose a hat, that's not good news for me. Great for you, I suppose. And, or, or this, do you want the good news or the bad news? It's like, uh, I always take the bad news. I feel like most people take the bad news. If we were to survey, most people would take bad news. And if the bad news is so bad, it makes the good news not even good, and you don't even care about the good news. And, and so, when we hear the phrase good news, it, it's kind of confusing to us. But this isn't just good news that the angel was proclaiming. It was the best news possible in the history of mankind. And it, it's really amazing, this good news with it comes great joy and the best part is it's for all people. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, but um, so I, I had the privilege of uh, going to Israel and, and so anytime I read the story, uh, just being in Bethlehem and like in the fields, I've got such a vivid picture of this. And so since the angels uh, spoke this, I thought I would play basically the three Christmas carols that have angels in the title. So yet another thrown together medley. So here is angels also on the Christmas CD that you will now buy.
Thank you. Okay, so again, we've got angels proclaiming good news, but it's not just good news, it's good news, and there's great joy associated with that good news. So great joy, and what is the good news basically? The, the, the good news is essentially the gospel of Jesus. And I'm very guilty of this. Uh, I, I kind of think that the gospel is for people who are not believers. Now that's what they need. But that could not be further from the truth. The gospel is good news with great joy for all people. And that's all of us. And the gospel is such good news that it can fill us with great joy just by being reminded of it. It's the best news ever. We've, we're hopeless sinners and we now have a savior. That's exciting. That's the whole point of Christmas. That's why we get together. That's why the songwriters wrote all these songs. And, and it, it's to worship our Savior who came to earth, which is just an amazing story. So um, good news, great joy. And uh, before I go to the last part, I want to play, uh, let's see, what am I playing? <laughs> Got it. Okay, it's about joy. If you were in um, church this morning here at Mount Brook Community, I played this. So this is kind of a Christmassy rendition of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
Thank you. Wow. Gosh, we're already 45 minutes in. How crazy is that? That is, it, this has flown by. Um, so the last thought, we've got good news that brings great joy, as we just heard, but for all people. That's the most beautiful part about the gospel. If you think it's not for you, Jesus says otherwise. It is for you. And so just getting really personal, really deep, I will share kind of an experience that I've had. As a little person, if you are to scour the Bible, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, and look for anything regarding people of short stature, I just want to find somebody like me in the Bible. There's going to be two instances, one in the Old Testament, one in the New. The first instance is in the book of Leviticus, and it's in chapter 21. So God dwells with his people today through his spirit. He dwelt with people in Jesus' day through his son, and he's dwelt back in that time in the tabernacle, and that was his house. And the whole book of Leviticus is just rules of who can enter what room and when. And unfortunately, there's a listing of the types of people who cannot enter God's house. And it says, nor a hunchback, nor a dwarf. So it specifically says somebody with dwarfism is blemished to the point where they're unable to enter God's house. So if I'm Jewish or if I'm only looking at the Old Testament, that's a pretty hopeless scenario. But there's another instance. You keep reading. And it's, you know, as a little person, you, you just live life differently. You have to. And, and so there was a man named Jesus who we were all celebrating tonight. And he was coming through a city, and a short-statured man named Zacchaeus wanted to see him. So he climbed up in a tree to see Jesus. And if Zacchaeus knew the entire Old Testament, he would know you're not welcome in God's house. So the most beautiful thing happened. He called him out by name and said, I'm coming to your house today to tell you about how you're now welcome and mine. And that, that curse, that, that hopeless news had been completely turned on its head. And, and that's the gospel. Before Jesus, we were all on that list. We're all blemished because of sin. None of us could enter God's house eternally. And it was a hopeless state. But then Jesus came and he says, I have good news and it's going to bring you great joy. And it's for all people. And I just find it very curious that God chose not only to seek out Zacchaeus, but that that was preserved also in the book of Luke um, later on. And, and so that just brought me immense hope. It brought me immense... Uh, I was just blown away when, when I... Uh, when God taught me that. And so I hope that that encourages you, that this, this news we're talking about, don't, don't be desensitized to it. Don't let diminishing returns, just because you've heard it a million times, take away how it should be so awe-inspiring, because you are all people, and this is for you. It doesn't matter if you accepted this news years and years ago, like it's still, so you need it today just as much as you needed it before. So feast on that and be encouraged by that. And um, next time you hear of Zacchaeus, um, I hope that that uh, brings you some encouragement. So that night um, that the angel came, 
Uh, there are two really awesome Christmas carols talking about um, a particular night. So I'm going to do Silent Night and then Oh Holy Night. And then we've got some more stuff planned as well. Thank you. So the last piece of good news that I want to share with you is this. There's something else with this good news. I've shared the good news tonight, certainly, 
But I want you to hear this, and it goes all the way back to the book of Psalm. And it's in 112, 6 through 7. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. So this news is so good that we now no longer even have to be afraid of bad news. How encouraging is that? Because bad news happens all the time. My parents got bad news when I was born. And God has this thing that he's promised us, that he will take what is seemingly bad and work it out for good for those who love him. So be encouraged uh, the rest of this Christmas season uh, that this good news that we're celebrating really is that good and that the bad news that could be on the horizon pales in comparison to the good news of Jesus Christ. So uh, what we're going to be doing the rest of the time, I, I want to invite Drew back. If he's still here, okay, good. So, uh, surely he did not leave. Okay, uh, We have one more song to do, and then hopefully we can get some lyrics up uh, to do just two songs congregationally, and then um, we will let you all out to form very, 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 very long CD lines. And we will try to make it fast, um, but again, just take them. It's an honor system. Just pay me whenever. I mean, it, it's fine. I'm not worried about it. All right, Drew.
Keep it up. All right. Thank you so, so much. So I, I wanted to end uh, just with singing some, some carols together. We're, so we're going to sing uh, kind of the chorus of O Come All You Faithful and then all four verses of Joy to the World, assuming we can get lyrics. If not, we'll just cut to the chase and do the first one. Oh, we got lyrics. Nice. Okay. We're good. Key. I think it's an A. Such a great try. Hey, we're gonna do A. Whatever. That's good. Would you stand together and sing? And oh, 
Thank you, Drew. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, and thank you so, so much for coming. Merry Christmas.